Hi everyone, welcome back to Sakuzar Classroom. This is lesson two, so if you haven't already, go ahead and check out lesson one first where we cover anatomy and hands because today's topic is a bit related. So speaking about the topic, today's class is about Jamo, please. Dugu, 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 dugu perspective this is also a very highly suggested topic and i really recommend you watching my previous lesson first because i think the knowledge in that will help you with this lesson as well so let's understand what perspective is first it is the art of representing three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height width depth and position in relation to each other so basically it's portraying what you see three-dimensionally to a two-dimensional painting or drawing because whatever you draw it's not 3d right unless you sculpt it so it's about how to accurately portray that so that you can trick the viewers to believing it is three-dimensional so to me there are two types of perspectives there's the background's perspective and the people's perspective the background perspective i feel like every art class goes over it already so i'm just gonna like briefly touch on it the two most common types of perspective in background is the one point perspective and the two point perspective so the one point perspective looks like this you've probably seen it before there's like a vanishing point right here and then basically you have lines leading out to it while the buildings kind of extend and become bigger the closer they are to you and then the way you draw this, I found this picture online. So basically, you would have this vanishing point in the middle where everything kind of like fades into that point. And then when it goes out, you just make these like grid lines at first. And then when you draw your buildings or whatever, you just follow it to become par parallel lines. So basically, if you want to draw a building here, you would just do this and then you add um, straight lines down, straight lines down, and then one line across for it to be perpendicular, and then here like that, and then for it to be another building, for example, you would do another line here, and then another, for example, you can leave this out. This is a fat building, so you can leave this out, and then just, oops, my hands are very shaky today. And then, um, perpendicular here, they're all right angles, as you can see, right angle, right angle. And then here, make sure these two are parallel to each other, and these two pa are parallel to each other, while well, this line follows the curve that goes out. So, oops, I drew it on the same layer, that is not good. You basically just follow this line, and then you just extend it, while these lines always go, um, 180 degrees or 90 degrees you can do the same thing on the other side let me create a new layer this time so i'm just going to quickly demonstrate again you can see that you have this shape here and you can keep adding maybe there's another taller building if it's a taller building make sure that the this point and this point connect so for example the other taller building is like this whatever you the edge has to connect to the point of the vanishing point and that's how you do one point perspective follow the vanishing point and then you add buildings like this with the method aforementioned so that is the most i guess basic way to do perspective and then the other one is called two point perspective so in this um as you can see there are two points two vanishing points and basically buildings like this they usually come in a v shape and they do this so uh, there's a picture i have here um that you can kind of see imagine you're in the cross section of a road and it leads to two other roads and you're in the middle so that's kind of how it feels when you do two point perspective and how you do it is you have two vanishing points right draw this line across kind of like this and then you can start adding stuff imagine we're drawing buildings right so the same logic and then this line goes straight this line goes straight this line goes straight just follow the lines without anything and then the other way you do the same thing like this and then this one's a fat building 
you have yourself some cubes that follow the two-point perspective. So that is like the most standard way to do perspectives and I think after you practice and get the hang of it, it does become... you quite you become quite accustomed to it, so... Um, so that's kind of the basics of perspective for one point and two point perspective. Now, let's move on to the people side here as I drew one punch here. So in people perspectives, there is a technique called foreshortening. It is used a lot in fine art. So the description is, foreshortening is a fine art technique that captures how the eye perceives objects or subjects receding in space. Foreshortening is a fundamental part of linear perspective drawing and it gives two-dimensional art the illusion of depth. So perspective is all about creating the illusion of depth and making sure that your drawing becomes three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface and here are just some examples in fine art so on the left here is lamentation of christ this piece was done in early renaissance so that was like ad 1400 and then on the right here is lady with umbrella and this piece was done in the impressionist era which is one of my favorite eras and that is during the 19th century so you can see there's been a very like long gap in history but people still use this technique which shows how prevalent it is so i just kind of want to make that point so how do you do for shortening in my previous our classroom video i emphasize on this point and i'll say it again there is absolutely nothing wrong with using references in fact they help you and make your artwork better people might think it's cheating and i did kind of think like that when i was about 13 but using references will dramatically improve the quality of your work so here i just took another photo of myself and we're gonna try to use the foreshortening technique so firstly when you do a foreshortening technique this is a thing i want everyone to consider is that where is like the camera so right now the camera is in the bottom and then so what i want to do is kind of like go up like this and make everything smaller the more it goes up because it's further away so in this photo i would start drawing with the legs and if you haven't watched my previous classroom video i talk about using line drawing and how I personally like using like continuous line technique where I would just keep drawing in pen. Obviously, if you're not familiar with it yet, you can just do whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to do in this video when I show my example and how I draw for shortening. And especially if you're doing cartoon and stuff, you can emphasize more on the shapes. So I can make the legs super big because it's super close to the camera. And then start to make things smaller the more it goes up. Another thing if you're doing it digitally is you can kind of use distort to play around with it or liquefy to make it go better so if i do like this and i kind of if i want to draw the buildings in the back i can do it like this where they're kind of curving in like a fish island it's kind of like emphasizing on the perspective a little bit and how the top is definitely getting smaller and when it cuts closer you can see the arms are getting bigger and you can see how small the face is compared to the legs to really emphasize it. So this is what I mean by foreshortening. It's kind of like if it's like closer to you, you would try to exaggerate and make that shape bigger. While if it's further away, you would exaggerate and making it purposely smaller. This took me a really long time to get. So please don't worry if you're struggling because when I first started doing perspectives and stuff, it definitely, definitely was so so difficult like honestly it was it was really hard to like not give up because that was how difficult this whole perspective thing is when it comes to drawing figures and mashing that with perspective and foreshortening 
so here i did another um pose and in this one i want to do the same thing maybe the camera here is in the bottom so everything that goes up would be smaller so this time i'm gonna use a base of reference when i'm doing the base i'm really emphasizing on the angles so you can see how the head is way smaller here while i'm trying to make the legs bigger and another thing is don't forget the things i talked about last class like gesture drawing and figure drawing so when i'm talking about here i'm still thinking a little bit about the line of action as you can see here is the line of action so i will also keep that in mind and then when it comes to the bottom here um the the feet will get like bigger to show the foreshortening i've been doing like perspective digital tully at first because it's like easier to like adjust and manipulate instead of just erasing everything and going again so um if you want to take the easy way out at first obviously you can because we're still learning as long as you don't like give up then everything is fine i personally like doing digital more if it's if i'm practicing at first and then once i feel comfortable enough maybe i'll do traditional because that kind of like limits like i can't use lasso tool and liquify and such when i'm doing traditional obviously So you can see it starts to get big because there, it's getting closer to me. Another thing I like to say to everyone is make sure you're not doing the tubes and not just straight lines. Try to really go for the curves and observe your reference image. So for me, I would like look how my hand's not actually like this only, you can see it's curving a little bit. And if you're on digital, you can also just play around with it. The final one is I wanted to try to do a different angle. So this one would be from, the camera would be here and it would be up to down. So everything that is like further down would be smaller. So from this, I would really emphasize on, for example, the eyes and make sure I capture people like that. So then I can make the eyes really big and then make the rest smaller. So you can see how in this photo as a reference, you can see how the angle is kind of like we're looking down on me because <laughs> that is me in the drawing, right? So. Um, when you make the head really big while the body really small then you can see the emphasis is on the head and not only that will lead you to the focal point and focus on the eyes it also can help you show that um the angle for shortening and that the perspective is that you're looking up to down because the closest thing is the tallest thing which is my head okay so i wanted to talk about some takeaways so the first thing if you're doing background perspectives maybe not just even background but also just objects
focus on the f- one point perspective or two point perspective one point perspective has one vanishing point which looks like this and then two point perspective has two vanishing points which looks like this and for now for people i know a lot of different artists will teach you different ways to approach this topic i personally chose an easier method and to be honest with you if i did the really hard things that the other artists said for example like using the coil method or like having circles around drawing circles around it or like drawing a cube to represent like the overall shape first and then going in and then doing all of that those are obviously methods and probably more sophisticated and probably can be used for more complicated situations But for now, um, what I like to do is use references. Obviously, like even if you don't look like the character or person you're drawing, you can still you can still use yourself as a drawing as a guide. For example, the Jinx drawing that I drew, I'll insert it on screen right now. I use myself as a reference to not only look at how to draw the hands, but like the perspective and how to foreshorten. And yeah, so always use yourself as a reference. If you can't find any other references, please use references. The other thing is foreshortening, which is emphasizing on shape form. enlarging or exaggerating some parts different parts in order to to give the illusion of death so the closer it is the bigger it will be and the more you exaggerate it the more intense the angle is so that is kind of um, a basic crash course lesson on perspective both for backgrounds and for people okay now on to homework time so the homework is pretty straightforward it's just what we covered in class the first one will be to draw background of object you can do whatever you want i'm not limiting you to anything just make sure that you are using the one or two point perspective to do just do do an object you can choose to do a like a city street view it really depends up to you just make sure that I know you're using the vanishing point and using the one or two point perspective. Um, if you forgot, the two point perspective looks like this and the one point perspective looks like this. The second task is to draw any of the photos that I drew in class. I know they're all photos of me, but you know, um, it's the easiest way to get photos without asking for anyone's permission because it's my photos. So. Use the foreshortening method. As I mentioned, the camera should be down in these two photos while the camera should be up here for this photo. Remember, if it's closer to the camera, the body part would appear larger while the things further away can appear smaller and you can really emphasize this by like going all out and you might think it looks weird but especially if you're doing like a cartoonish style it actually looks okay in like a very exaggerated memorable style so yeah that is the homework um if you want to submit it i'll leave a pinned comment as well in the description a google form the form will close next monday which is the 18th of july all the photos and details will be listed there okay that's it for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next class and i'm looking forward to seeing all the homework Bye bye